On this video, we, we have to talk about the alternation of generations, or the process by which uh, multicellular organisms uh, reproduce. Now, you see in the screen three different cycles, or different types of reproductive cycles. And multicellular organisms will engage in one of these, and the, there are subtle differences. Although meiosis and mitosis are part of all of them, uh, the difference really is in where the adult is and where the gametes are and how they are produced. And so we've learned in our videos before that meiosis and mitosis are both involved in the sexual and asexual reproductive processes of multicellular organisms. Um, however, it's... Um, the order is what changes and who's the adult changes and things like that so let's pay close attention and see if you can follow through and then we'll see some specific examples uh, just so that we can clarify how that works okay so first we have the um, on the left side the animal generation uh, cycle which starts as we talked about in the previous video with an adult that is a diploid multicellular organism so you see here a representation of the rat and notice that he's a diploid multicellular organism right here. And that's where we recognize the animal. And then through meiosis, as we've learned, we make gametes, you know, um, and we'll make four gametes out of each, uh, cell, each germ cell that was um, underwent meiosis is going to make four gametes. One of these gametes randomly is going to meet the gamete of another organism doing a process called fertilization and we stored what we call a zygote, which is, a, again, a 2N organism. Now, this gamete never actually lives as an organism by itself. That's the key thing about the uh, uh, the key thing about this type of organism. Uh, this type of cycle is that the gametes are not necessarily organisms. They can't by themselves literally be considered alive. Now, they will uh, they they will merge by fertilization and then form a zygote, which will then, by mitosis, become the adult again. And so you see, that's the normal process we discussed in the previous video, and it's, make, it's the one that makes sense for most people at this point. The second uh, type of generation is, is the one that a lot of plants use. Now, not all plants, but many plants will use this. Now, the adult plant, the one that you think of as the, uh, you see you go outside and see a tree, or when you go see a fern, those are actually called sporophytes. And a sporophyte is the adult diploid organism, just kind of like the animal. All right. Now the difference is that plants will produce, some plants will produce through meiosis, not gametes, but spores. Right. This is a key difference. Notice that meiosis did not produce a gamete. Look at the difference there. Meiosis here, gamete, but meiosis here produced it a spore. Now what is a spore? That N organism undergoes mitosis. You see that? Here, this is the difference. That's why that doesn't happen there. The gamete never undergoes mitosis in animals, but in, in, in uh, plants, that gamete undergoes mitosis and makes a multicellular haploid organism called gametophyte. Now, this gametophyte uh, is actually the sexual organ of the plant or a sexual plant in itself. In the case of um, angiosperms and gymnosperms, that's actually attached to the plant. It's going to be the cone or the flower. But in the case of ferns, it's a smaller actual separate flower that usually sits underneath the ferns and that's the thing that's actually producing the gametes. Now the gametophyte is, is a, it's a short-lived um, second plant you may call it. Almost like the sexual organ of the plant is separate from the plant itself. And it's a short-lived and its job is to create gametes. And then by mitosis it's actually going to make gametes it can do meiosis because otherwise it would have reduced whatever what is already reduced even more. So by mitosis, it will split up a piece of it to make gametes. But the the advantage of doing it this way is that it will make thousands of gametes out of uh, out of one spore that grew up to be one gametophyte. And so that's the difference between uh, plants and animals is that you can make many many more gametes this way. It's a lot more gametes because of the mitosis of the gametes first, and then. These gametes will be either seeds or pollen, and they will then join uh, through a fertilization process to make a zygote, which is a 2N uh, thing. And then again, now it's going to look a little more like the animals again. And that is going to be your seedling. And then that will multiply again by mitosis to re restore the diploid multi-organism that we recognize as the uh, plant, which, uh, like I mentioned before, is a sporophyte. Now, notice the basic difference here is the formation of the spore through mitosis instead of the gamete through mitosis. And then the, the spore has to undergo mitosis in order to actually um, 
formed gametes. Right? That's interesting. Now, in plants, uh, advanced plants like angiosperms and gymnosperms, the spore grows into a, 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 a cone or a, a flower, respectively, attached to the, to the plant itself. But in the case of a fern, that spore is carried miles away with the wind, possibly. And that's another advantage of using this system. Since they can't locomote, this is actually an advantage for plants. Now, the way that fungus do it, does it is even more different. So some, multi, some um, organisms like uh, fungus will actually, be, and actually other simpler animals, some protists as well, um, will actually perform this process. Now, what you think is the adult, and that's the weird part, the thing you see as the normal uh, living organism that spends most of its life is actually the haploid cell organism. So that's where we start the cycle. That is the adult. It's a haploid. I know, it's weird. The adult is haploid. Now, the adult will then undergo mitosis to form gametes because he's already haploid. So he wants, he wants to make a gamete. It just makes a copy of itself uh, through, a, a, like, basically you have multicellular, oh, but all the cells are half cells. And then one of these cells specializes into a gamete by mitosis and merges with the gamete from another one and then restores, makes a zygote, which is a 2N organism. Now, the 2N organism uh, may grow to be multicellular or not, depending on if you're a protist. Of course, it's not going to. But that 2N organism will actually, uh, may undergo mitosis to become a, two, a 2N uh, multicellular structure, which produces uh, spores through meiosis. And then those spores through meiosis uh, will go s somewhere where they will settle down. And then when favorable conditions are ha happening, they will undergo mitosis to restore the, the multicellular uh, haploid, which is the adult. So you can see the differences. And you need to study this in detail so you can really get the nuances. And the best way is probably to practice the drawings and see if you uh, understand that. But you can see the difference um, clearly. The adult on these two are multicellular diploid organisms but in this it's a multicellular haploid organisms here gametes are done by mitosis and so are here All right but here the gametes are done by meiosis both of these involve spores right this and this both involve spores in all of them fertilization makes a 2n organism and so there are some similarities and some differences there um, so um, also notice that the their mitosis happens twice throughout the cycle in on the ones on the right side, but only once throughout the cycle in the one in the left side because the gametes don't reproduce. It. While here, the gametes are are being produced out of a haploid organism, right? And then the the one that actually makes the gametes is produced th through mitosis. And so there's a uh, variations of what we talked about before. Now. I'm going to show you some briefly, and I, I, I bring this back when we actually talk about organisms later in the year, but I'm going to show you briefly, without getting too much detail, examples of these actual methods. So you see here the classical method we already spent time talking about in other videos, so I'm not going to talk about, but basically each organism makes a gamete, and then those gametes will join again at the end through uh, randomly through um, sexual uh, reproduction to fertilization and then you make it the diploid zygote and then that will go through mitosis from juvenile from zygote to juvenile and then to differentiation again to the adult which repeats the process so this is the animal version the version that we do it and then you have for example here uh, a fern life cycle or a, a gymnosperm life cycle or an angiosperm li life cycle and all in the screen and these are plant life cycles now it does get complicated and I'll do, I will talk more in detail about this when we do plants but I wanted to show you the fern for example so you can see the example of what we were talking about that's the mature front or the spur of the, the diploid organism we talked about now notice that he will actually undergo uh, my mitos meiosis okay to form a spore which falls on the floor and under favorable conditions will actually create a young gametophyte now the gametophyte will continue to reproduce via mitosis to actually create a mature gametophyte which looks different from the fern as a haploid organism which actually produces female and male gametes depending on the kind of plant it might have both on the plant or just one of them them in the plant uh, and then they will actually join again by fertilization to make a sporophyte, which is an uh, embryo, a seedling almost. Well, it's not really a seed because ferns don't have seeds. But then this 
will undergo mitosis, all right, to, to, so that it can be returned to the actual uh, sporophyte adult. So that's this fern life cycle. And you see that there's some, something similar will happen here, that the endosperm will actually make a uh, structure which is designed to create the spore, and it does that structure through my differentiation through mitosis, just like here, it differentiated into a sporangium, which actually makes the sporum. So this is the cone that actually inside the cone, uh, a specific part of that will undergo meiosis to form a, a, a spore. Now that spore will undergo will actually um, undergo mitosis to form seeds. You see an ovum seed right here and a, and a seed over here used by the male. Now those will act by fertilization to form a diploid seed. And then that diploid seed uh, will then grow by mitosis back in differentiation back into the adult. So you see the, the thing we talked about, that the plant life cycle is peculiar. Now, if you look at the fungus life cycle, it's what we talked about. The adult is here. It's an actual um, haploid organism. Okay, so this you see here the haploid organism, which is the adult. And now this will actually undergo mitosis to make... Uh, spores, which are these little things, spores. Now these spores will then fuse together with another or organism and then make a diploid organism, all right? And then this diploid organism actually will, will produce um, spores again by mitosis and then by meiosis it will make the actual uh, spores, which are or the gametes, which are actually going to be stored, go undergo um, multi multicellular division through the process of, my of mitosis to become to go back to the adult, which is the this fungus here. So the fungus is adult; it undergoes mitosis to make gametes. The gametes fuse and become an a, a organism that then produces uh, uh, a diploid organism, fertilizes. Each of the gametes will merge, and then that fertilization will make a diploid structure, which has the job only of creating gametes, and then those gametes will, will then form the adult haploid organism. So it's a different kind of cycle in the fungus. And we'll talk more about in detail about this when we actually do fungus later in the year. All right? So take-home point is there are different kinds of cycle there for reproductive pro, uh, sexual reproduction and we call this the alternation of generations and you can see that plants fungus and animals uh, and protists all do in different uh, different ways and it, it, what difference is where they spend their adult life mostly as a haploid or a diploid how do they make their gametes are there spores involved or not and things like that and you do have to have some general understanding of this uh, in order to do well all right so Go out there, review this video, uh, maybe try to draw this, the, the basic cycles so you can get the nuances of the differences. All right.